Welcome to the newest version of Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. This is the Ellisbury update. It's the first part of a lot of features. They're going to be in the final version 4.3. There's a lot that's new in this version, but I'm not going to cover everything because I'm going to be talking about very basics of getting your campaign company started today. Just on a normal medium difficulty setup, we're going to watch out for a few pitfalls that people tend to fall into and show you how to make a decent, normal car company that doesn't go bankrupt. So new motors is born. Just going to choose a medium preset. And this starts us off with a medium car factory and a medium engine factory and a little tech pool and some dealerships. We're in a pretty comfy place. There is one pitfall to watch out for just to begin with. We have not a ton of dealerships in this version of the game. You will have to make sure you have enough market awareness and dealership level to sell all the cars you make. And if you make too many cars, that's how you go bankrupt. Obviously, right? You need to sell enough cars. But we're going to choose a reasonable size market. We started in Gasmia. That's the largest market. It's the America analog. And if we look at who's aware of our cars, at our dealerships we have now in markets like Family Premium, Family Sport, there's only a few hundred people. That should grow quickly, but something to watch out for if our car company gets off the ground too quick and starts making too many cars. So I want to start with the family premium market. That's a good size for a medium factory. Basically, what you want to do is the, the most profitable choice. You don't have to do this, but you could sell to the most expensive market, which is still big enough to buy all of the cars you're making. So if you are in a small factory, you're better off going towards the more expensive markets like your convertible premium, luxury, grand touring. And the biggest factories, you'll need to be making stuff for family and commuter. You're gonna tend to start at the top and work your way down. We start with a medium factory, so a family premium kind of car is a good starting place. What do we want to start with? Uh, newer bodies are better. See, we start with a whole three tech pool for bodies. I'm liking something on the larger side. 3.2 meter wheelbase is a little too big. We have like a 2.8, 2.9. That's... This thing is so ugly. But you know what? We're going to sell it. So, steel or aluminum? This is a very important choice. The first choice you make for your car. Steel requires steel presses. And steel presses require a medium factory. It's a very big investment to start off with, but it will make your cars cheaper in the long run if you can make and sell enough. If you have a small factory, you're basically forced to make aluminum cars. And because that's a more expensive, nicer material, it kind of forces you into the upper markets, like luxury and grand touring and sports cars. And then we're going to choose a ladder frame. Space frame is, again, kind of a handmade thing. Not good for low market awareness, medium factory. We're just going to build a normal car for, for families, upper class families even. And the, the best suspension we can get is double wishbone. We don't start with any familiarity, I don't think. That'll be kind of high engineering for us, but if we can put them both on, this will be a great, they're very comfortable, easy to drive car. And starting in Gasmia gives us 
familiarity with push rods to begin with. This is a little crappy and low revving, but we're not going to make a fast, powerful engine. We just want a big, smooth engine. I'm not going to change the size. Just leave it there. I have more of that starting tech pool. Start with Engasmia, who barrel carburetors unlocked. Let's see, optimize our flow a little bit. Bring cams down. How are we doing on stress? How high can we rev? 4,300. And our crank is handling this. Looks like I have to do a heavy crank to make this much torque. It's going to force us to drive a little lower. It's okay to have a penalty here if you're selling into a market that does not care about reliability, but Family Premium does care. Keep adding compression until we stop getting more power from it. And that should about do it. I'm not going to super fine tune this just to kind of show you that you don't have to make the best possible car to sell well. At least I hope not. Rear wheel drive is going to be our main option here because we have a front engine and we just don't start with front wheel drive unlocked. Figure out how many gear ratios we want in a minute. Medium tires are the most comfortable. And we'll be starting with a premium interior because it's a premium car with recirculating ball being the this is also new I think or recently new instead of just manual steering and then power steering we have the choice between recirculating ball and rack and pinion where recirculating ball is more comfortable less sporty better for heavier cars and this is going to be a heavy car best safety we can get is a must have I'm just going to click normal suspension preset. I'm not going to super fine tune it, make it perfect. Because we're focusing on the factory stuff today. And we see that we have pretty good affordability in family and family premium. I have on the premium side for this. Let's get tired of looking at default automation red and we put a quick paint on it, but I'm not going to do any details to this car visually. So there we have our first model. It is not great desirability for family premium. It's a little cheap. It's a little slow. It's actually more of a family car. I might go back to the engine and just make it a little bigger. Or maybe not. Maybe I better not do that. My parts can't handle it. Or actually, you know what? You know what's really premium, really on theme for Gasmia would be just make this thing a V8. No serious changes. Just click V8, and we're already looking a little nicer. There we have our little under four liters V8. And gearing. This starts off as a disaster. The gearing system's all new. You can either choose this setup where we have in between gears and use our first gear and top gear and estimate the gears in between, which in this case we have two gears. Or we have the advanced setup where we can choose a final drive and individual gear ratios. And we can see that as we lengthen out that first gear, 
they they like that where there's a good overlap between the gears. And I'm going to go ahead and make the second gear pretty close to top speed. And the brakes will also need some manual attention. Drums suck, so we're just going to get the biggest ones we can in the front and some reasonably big ones in the rear until our brake fade here in the top right goes away. It's for drivability. And then I configure the force until it about lines up with our grip on each axle. And another thing that family markets like is soft pads. If we can manage it. They give us a little brake fade back. But it's okay. They want that comfort in the soft pads. Now we're looking at a more seriously competitive car. 124% desirability and a family premium. This has got the basics tuned right. That gearing and brakes is the one thing you really can't leave alone. Suspension, you need to click one of these presets. You don't have to get into the detailed tuning. You can later, but for now, this will be a basic car that sells. And in a medium factory, it's a good idea to have multiple trims. We're going to go ahead and just make a version that's exactly the same car, but it's got a really nice interior. Instead of our premium version going up to luxury, that's going to cost a lot more money. Call that luxury, premium. I want the game name the car for us. The Humpback. Oh, I came up with a perfect name right away. Now, the engineering sliders. We're actually safe just leaving these where they are, especially for a family car in a medium factory. These are pretty reusable. If you're in a small factory and you're doing like a handmade car with aluminum parts, a more manual construction process can be better. There is an optimal efficiency based on the parts that are chosen in your car. And there's a second optimal efficiency based on the size of the factory. Basically, a smaller factory likes lower tooling. A bigger factory likes higher tooling. And then parts like luxury interiors or handmade interiors or aluminum. Those like lower tooling. We're in a medium factory, steel parts, medium amount of tooling is fine. And our pace here is fine, 22 minutes to get the car out. Reliability is, uh, is valuable to us. But we also, it costs us a lot to add anything. And pressure, we're going to leave that where it is too, because we want to get our familiarity from the first car. That's a discount on all our future engineering. Uh, it's, a, it's a factor based on arbitrary numbers that are hidden from us, but you'll end up with those familiarity numbers when you choose a part in engineering. And then the engine goes through the same process. So here's something we see. The car is going to take 23 months to come out. The engine is so simple, it's only going to take three months to design. So we can improve it. We're going to bring our pressure down. That's going to give us more familiarity, so we can design better engines later, or facelifts. Funding can stay where it's at, because it's not costing us much. 1.6 million, when we started with 400 million in the bank, that's nothing to us. We are going to up the tooling, and that's going to save us on labor hours per engine made, so that we can make more engines for cheaper. And process is going to go up a little bit too. That costs us labor hours, but saves materials. Reliability, bring that up. All right, now they're both going to finish in 23 months. I almost always like to make sure that these numbers are going to be the same. The engineering for the engine and the engineering for the car it's going into. Anything else is leaving the bonuses from these sliders on the table. You don't want to do that. Cooling's the biggest one. If we can crank that up, it's going to make our cars cheaper and more of them. Or in this case, our engines. And engines are a big part of the car's expense. 
we're leaving this at the default medium one size. We have started with $400 million. It's only going to cost 27 to tool up this factory. So should we spend 75 million to make a bigger engine factory? Well, probably not at this point. Up until the blue line crosses up into the red zone, we're, we're not really needing a bigger engine factory. And it will do that if we make a bigger car factory, which we'll get to in a minute too. The other thing here, worker wages, worker quality. What we can get away with for this depends on how big of a country we're in and how big of a factory we have and the base scores for the country, which are all kind of, you'll, you'll learn them as you go. But in this case, I'm going to get a little stricter in my hiring standards. It's going to take us a couple months of the factory running before we can hire everybody. But it's going to bring our costs down per engine because they're going to be more efficient workers. And it'll help a little bit with this recall percent chance. Now, engine factories like it when you spend money on automation and tooling quality. But the cost of doing that goes up a lot if it's a bigger factory with more machines in it. And I'm going to give this a little extra. We also could just leave this at 50. QA threshold. That results in our recall percent chance here. We don't like recalls. That is when something goes wrong and you have to pay money to fix it. So we're going to crank this up until we get about below... This is a, a roll every month below half a percent. But the higher you go, if I crank this to 100, we can see that the number of engines we're going to make goes down and the cost per engine goes up if we have really strict quality assurance. So taking that down lets us get hundreds more engines per month. So that's the engine factory design complete. And then onto the car factory, where it's basically the same story. Now, once again, I can try to make a lot more cars, but I'm not going to do that right away. We can afford, if we wanted to, we could spend our money on making a medium three factory right away. In theory, that would help with our earnings potential a lot. If we go to this market screen here, look at the demographic sizes. There's 20,000 family buyers in Gasmia, but only 1,200 are aware of our company right now. We need our marketing to catch up before we build too many cars. So I'm going to leave this on medium one. I'm not going to go straight to medium three. We also are getting steel presses which I think we've started with for free, actually. Yeah, if I take it off, you can see there's a negative building cost here, so we're, we're discarding them and claiming money. Steel presses are stupid expensive if you don't start with them. It looks like on medium difficulty here we do. That's very good for us. I'm going to leave this right at medium one. Maximum shifts. We don't want to run the factory to three shifts. I'm saying this to two shifts. If you run your factory for three shifts, that means it's running day and night. That's 24 hours a day. And I don't want that to happen. It causes penalties to the amount of tooling damage. So when you go to repair your factory, it's going to cost a lot of money. And minimum shifts, we'll leave this at one. Target shifts... Uh, I believe that the consequence of target shifts, as I've had it explained to me, is that your factory will hire and fire workers if it's running above the target shifts. Or if we have target shifts at two and minimum shifts at one, or running down at one because we're making too many cars, you will keep the extra shift worth of workers on your staff. And you'll keep paying them, even though they're not making cars. So I'm going to leave this right at 1.5. We're going to always keep one and a half shifts of workers on hand, but we're going to up to two shifts or minimum one shift of car production. And we'll see the consequences of that once we start selling cars. And I'll up the worker quality a little bit until it takes us three months to hire everybody. You can see 
going from 50 to 70, making 1,230 cars up to 1,340 cars. So we get, we get an extra 100 cars by hiring better quality workers, which we can afford to do right now. You can also see there's a production efficiency here. A couple of things to keep in mind. This is a consequence of these sliders here, the automation. If we go down, we see it actually get more efficient in this case, because it's, it's not a very big factory, but we also, that has other costs to it. If you are in a small factory on a difficult start, you will want that lower automation to keep this efficiency high. We have a really high efficiency at 90%. You'll also see, oh wow, so normally if you have a lot of trims, there's an efficiency penalty for the number of trims you have. We have only two in a medium factory. Going down to one doesn't even save us any. And the last thing to look out for is there's this blue limited production flag. The luxury interior is hard to make in larger factories. In our medium factory, we get a penalty that brings us down to 92% efficiency for this car. So it's costing us more labor hours. But that's not bad. Like 92% is still great. If it gets really low, you have a problem. It's something to watch out for. If you have like a huge factory, it's hard to make these luxury interiors. So I'm leaving the quality where it is. Again, steel presses get very expensive to increase the quality of. And we don't know that we want to make that many more cars right now. I'm giving us some QA. And we'll set it out. If I was making a giant factory with a ton of money later, I'd use much higher sliders. And if I was starting a small company in a small factory, I'd use lower sliders, potentially. Uh, you can actually use very high quality sliders if you don't have those steel presses. It's very cheap to do. Now we're on to the forecast screen. So we've set up all of our factory sliders. That's a car factory and an engine factory. And the engineering sliders for both. Make sure our times are correct. Now, how much money are we going to sell our car for? Well, what's a family premium buyer want to pay for a car? About 17000 apparently. And that's a little high for us, making 188% margin if I set it to that. So I'm going to drop this to 12000 I think, could be good. And then our luxury trim... It costs us $1,500 more to make. We're going to cost uh, uh, 15, maybe 16,000. Then we hit calculate forecast. And we see an estimated total profit. Now, what I like to do is just play with these numbers up here and recalculate until this profit number looks really high. It's OK if the first year is red. That's usually because you're upgrading your factory and it, there's a tooling cost. You'll see it turn green, and if it's all red, that's a bad sign. There's probably something wrong with your business strategy. So let's see. Does it estimate if I raise the price of both by $1,000, am I going to make more money? The answer is no. What if I bring it down by $1,000 where it was? Yes, $50 million. That's probably a pretty good rate to go at. We're at a pretty high margin. Even 100% is a high margin. Uh, I don't think that like 20 to 30% is very good until the late game. You're not going to see that very often. But 80 to 90% for a premium car. It could be lower for like a, a higher production, smaller car. Pretty reasonable. If I bring it down even more, I guess make more profit. So sure, we'll try it here. 10,000 for the regular one, 14,000 for the premium one. Just by kind of following the numbers, we get a market estimate of what would be a reasonable price. And also remember, your high score in the game is based on how many cars you've sold. Uh, the, the more expensive markets are worth more, but ending the game with piles of money doesn't get you a higher score. On the other hand, you're probably concerned with not going bankrupt. So for that reason, we also like to have more money. So 23 months, I will not take out a loan because we started with a lot of money. I'm going to sign this off. 
Now we are on the timeline screen. And there's one thing that I'm gonna do absolutely first. This is important. We're gonna go down to the bottom here. We're gonna click marketing. So you can see the market awareness in every different market we're selling our cars to. It starts very low. 6% is not enough for a medium factory in basically any market. And this is our growth, 0.44%. There's two things that make this go up. In this screen, we can spend money on marketing. And the other important ingredient is that we have to actually sell cars. So if you mouse over a market, say family premium, you can see how much the different stats matter to that market. Safety is the most important, then comfort, then drivability, prestige, reliability. And we can market based on these attributes. Now we start with 400 million. We're spending 100 million to get our cars built. So we're going to have 300 left in the bank. And it's going to take about two years before that car comes out. So let's say I probably want to spend a good 10 to 20 million would be good. Maybe even 25 million. So I'm going to try and spend a total marketing cost per month of a million dollars. That's going to increase the stats that they like that are relevant slowly until I look like I'm close to that with safety being our biggest one. And we can also see that the category cost varies. The stats that are more important to more markets are higher. So if I'm spending level four in prestige, they cost me more than level four safety. Practicality is good for family. Uh, we're at $700,000 now. Keep cranking it up. There, a million dollars spent in Gasmia. Reputation marketing in there, too. That down. And we can see that the awareness of family or family premium is going to grow by more than 5% each year. Currently projected. And in our neighboring company, Hevesia, we can do the same thing. I'm not going to spend as much money there. Now, if I let the game tick a couple times, we can see we have research coming in. We're going to unlock new things next time we want to make a new car or make changes to our car. They're all very useful. I'm going to hold off spending money for now, but this screen, or research and development, is also very important. It lets us unlock stuff early. But more importantly, it makes everything we produce cheaper. So we start with a baseline of three R&D in every category for medium difficulty. That's pretty good. That makes it very easy for us. That is going to make a discount on every part in the car. As if we were using lower quality. I'll explain that again, probably when we do our facelift. And now our cars are not out yet. We're starting to make some pre-orders. Some people have ordered our car ahead of time. They're excited. They want to see it. If we look right now at Family Premium in Gasmia, we have a new feature for 4.3, the sales breakdown. We can see who is selling what. And despite only selling pre-orders, we are already the fifth best-selling company in Gasmia for the family premium market. That means we had a pretty good car. The luxury and the premium sold equal amounts to the same market family premium. That's because they're at different prices. The premium is less desirable, but it's cheaper. So that overlap is actually valuable to us. And we can see for comparison, the best selling car looks like this apparently and has those stats. Uh, offhand, 
a good oh no we're we're not the fifth best are we we are we are way down there just put us visible I see how that works. So yeah, there's there's a lot of companies selling more than us. We can see Best Company has 30% market awareness. They're selling a thousand cars. We're selling 30 cars in a month with 10% market awareness. As we get to the point of constructing our factories in the timeline, it's gonna start costing us a lot more money but that's okay. Yeah, $26 million spent that month. But we are doing great. In fact, we've come out, we're making cars, we're immediately raking in the dough. So let's see here. Our factories are running less than two shifts because they're taking time to hire staff. That's that months until two shifts to hire thing we saw. And that's just fine. And we can also see that we have three orders. It's going to take us approximately two months to make up all the pre-orders that we have. Uh-oh, quality issue. Remember there was a half percent chance for every month of uh, having a recall? Well, that's happened to us now. And uh, what do I want to do here? We'll do a full recall. It's going to hurt our reputation a little bit, but it should be worth it. Got to preserve our prestige. We currently have, uh, we're not a reputable brand. We have negative prestige and reputation somehow. But we're selling lots of cars. And that pre order amount's going to go down and down and down until we catch up with all our pre-orders and we start building stock of cars. And in this case, it's going down pretty slowly, which is good. I honestly like to maintain a little bit of pre-orders for like the life of that car. One last thing to look at here. I also want to show you what'll happen if we go ahead and make medium three factories and we don't spend any money on marketing. But what we'll see here is that we're gonna sell just absolutely not enough cars. We're gonna make too many cars. I wanna see that bear fruit. I know we've seen people in the Discord complain that they're not selling enough cars. I think that's what they're happening is they neglected the marketing screen. Even if they did maybe make a decent car. And yep, we see right away, get a short engineering time, did not spend money on marketing, and because of both of those factors, we didn't have time to build up more awareness and we're quickly building up stock in cars and we're losing money, even though we're selling a good car and we're making a lot of profit per car. We just don't have that market awareness because we've launched our car with 6% instead of like 20% where you saw me on the other save file. And that's how we start losing money. If I just let this play, say, oh man, I'm losing money, I can't afford to build a new facelift. I spend it all on making medium three factories that the market couldn't handle. You can see we're losing 10 million a month and we're gonna start being forced to take out loans pretty soon here. If I let it run, eventually we'll go bankrupt. It'll take a while, but it'll, it'll happen. Let's just go ahead right now and see what we can do it's really best not even to wait at all, unless you have a specific plan for like something you want to wait to unlock. The best thing to do is to start your facelift immediately and keep your cars as up to date as possible, in my opinion. We're gonna make a facelift. We're already gonna make the premium Mark II and the luxury Mark II of the humpback. And for our engine, we just could replace variant And you can see already the stats are slightly better, even though we haven't changed anything. And that's because the design year has become newer. So everything we put into the car improves. 
And we also see this here, the Quality Slayer. So I was talking about the tech pool, right? So it says we have 3.1 remaining tech pool after unlocks. Now, if you were in the sandbox with zero tech pool, then the cost of making these parts is going to be the same for us as if your slider for quality was at minus three. But we get all the benefits of being at zero quality slider, baseline, normal, because we have that tech pool. It makes the whole car a lot cheaper. Ooh, automatic transmissions. They're going to love these. Our sportiness is completely gone. Not that it was good before, but it's now at zero. Our comfort's gone up by six points, and that's great. And we also need to fix the gearing. We also don't have to worry about it yet. But an important thing to watch out for is your car's emissions on this screen here. You can see there's an emissions level. World Emissions Standards 1 is what we're at right now. And the requirement for every country in the world right now is zero. Uh, we can completely ignore that for a long time, but in the 1970s, it's going to come back to bite us. Now our facelift is going to take 10 months. Uh, let's see, let's get a little more tooling in here. A little more reliability. It's been 13 months. And the engine's going to take 14 months. I'm going to up the pressure on that. I think that's the, uh, yeah, all that time's coming from the exhaust. That lined up 13 months. And now I'm going to prepare to expand my factory. I'm hoping we have enough market awareness to pull that off. Our demographic sizes limited to awareness have more than doubled since we started in 1946. That's the value of that marketing. It's absolutely crucial. If you go with no marketing in your medium factory, you're going to be in trouble. Go to a medium two car factory as well. Still no loan. We're spending a lot of money. We have that money on expanding our factories. So as soon as we get to the point in the timeline where these factories start retooling, we're going to stop production. And for every pre-order that we still have, we're going to have to pay those people back their deposits. That means that our prices are too low. We are getting too many orders for the cars and we can't fill them. So I'm going to up the price significantly. $2,000 for each car. We're going to immediately have to pay back some pre-orders. We'll get as much money as we can while our factories are still up. Already we're building some stock and that stock is going to sell during the time that our factories are shut down. Oh no, engine recall. Clearly my QA sliders need to be higher. Or maybe the bug that doubles the recall chances back. Let's uh, have a 25% chance of being discovered. Let's do this on the down low. We'll just fix cars when they come in. We won't mention it to anybody. A little cheaper for us. As you can see, we're already above our starting money. The public discovered the issue. Our reputation has gone down. We have negative prestige and reputation still. And then we're losing piles of money because we've stopped making cars and we're building factories. That's okay. And then out to the other side, we have yet more pre-orders. Our market awareness is steadily growing. Now we're at 20% when we started at 6%. So it's a lot better for us. And our monthly sales. So we've made cars that have a good overlap. And of course, there's also not a lot of competition, apparently. So family is our best seller. Family premium's good. Commuter, for some reason, they prefer smaller cars, I thought, but they're buying our 10 mile per gallon V8s to commute to work. Um, even Grand Touring and Sport Cars, are, some of them are buying our cars. Uh, convertible. I guess it's just a lot of people giving up entirely on getting a convertible. And at this point, probably what I would do 
is build a new car with a unibody chassis or monocoque. That's going to be an even better, cheaper car that we can only make with steel presses in our medium factory. And they are path to making more money. So, reasonable slider setup. Spend money on marketing. That's crucial. Make a couple trims, overlap multiple markets, and you should be profitable. Good luck on your first company. Tell me how it goes.